everybody, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. Today I am here with an exciting video. It is my favorite backlist books that I read in 2018. A top 10 of 2018 that were not published in 2018. We're gonna jump right into that. <music> Guys, I have my list in front of me because I don't want to forget anything and a couple of these I don't have physically, so I wanted to make sure that I had as much information as I could. Now, I don't think I'm going to put these in any particular order except for a couple of them that are clearly, clearly, like, top books of the year for reading for me. But outside of that, we're just going to kind of broadly go through some books. We're going to start off with Tracy Cheese, The Reader. This is a fantastic fantasy novel about a world where books and reading have been outlawed. It just doesn't exist. And the main character is able to read and she finds this book, which is like magical. It's kind of like telling the story as the story is being played out in their lives. And it's really, really cool. I really, really want to catch up with this series. I read this in the month of November at the recommendation of Chelsea from Chelsea Palmer. And I fell in love with it. I think it's really well written. It was a, I actually read it in audiobook as opposed to physical copy, but it was really well crafted and I super, super enjoyed it. So this one definitely ends up on my list, probably around the number 10 slot. I'll give it a number 10 slot. Can I rate these? I don't know if I can rate these. I'm staring at the spines and I, I can't. Okay, we're just gonna pick this one. Um, I'm gonna do Female of the Species uh, by Minnie McGinnis, which is a book about rape culture and women and anger and how women manifest anger and protect one another and essentially kind of just goes over how deadly the female of the species is. Like everybody thinks they're meek and unassuming and they often underestimate them, but they can sometimes be the deadliest creatures in nature and the most violently protective and how much being constantly, constantly abused causes this rage to build up in you and what that does to a person and how that manifests in our world the more that we continue to enact this violence upon women. And it was so powerful and so poignant and so raw. And I loved everything about it. So I can't wait to read more by Minnie McGinnis. I have a whole bunch of tabs in here, but they're neon yellow. I don't know if you can see them against the, uh, the color of this <laughs> cover, but I really, really loved this book. If you've not picked this up yet and you can handle really difficult topics like death and murder and rape, then read that one. Then, is this a thriller? Is this a, like, I don't know. Somebody told me this was a horror. I called it a thriller because I don't know what to call things, but this is Myra Grant. This is Sean McGuire's pen name, and this is Into the Drowning Deep, which is about killer mermaids, man, and they are out there in the Mariana Trench in the deepest, darkest parts of our ocean that we don't pay enough attention to, and maybe that's for the best because seven years ago, this expedition went out there to do a mockumentary and they all disappeared. The boat was found covered in blood. Everybody was gone. And they go out seven years later to try to figure out what happened with this mockumentary and they find the mermaids. They do not want to be found or do they? Because they need food. Either way, shit goes down. And I think fell in love with Myra Grant's writing, but she had a novella that came before this called Into the Rolling Deep, Rolling in the Deep. I read that, so I knew the premise and I knew the big like plot twist kind of at the end because it was mentioned in uh, Rolling in the Deep. Like I know some people say it's too slow or the characters aren't developed enough. I really liked it. We have a sapphic relationship in this. We've got a whole bunch of diversity. We've got like batshit crazy people, like hunters. We've got scientists on this thing. We've got like reality TV stars. We've got fake mermaids that are going to go into the ocean and like pretend to be mermaids. We've got a host of different people on this ship. We've got like actual crew, scientists, marine biologists, the science that goes into this book, like the science that she came up with to describe these animals, to describe their language, to describe their pod structure, everything about it, all these like microorganisms that live down in this Mariana Trench that she invented. Like it's just freaking mind-blowing and I loved everything about it. I will be picking up more from Myra Grant in 2019 because ho holy shit blew my damn mind. It's gonna be the only thriller horror that you find on any of my lists probably. God it's so good and it's that like eerie like it doesn't get jump scary it's just that tension and the tension just ramps up and ramps up and ramps up and your whole body is tense your shoulders are tense like your whole body is 
coiled waiting to see what's going to happen. You know something's going to happen. And because I read the novella before this, I know what's coming. As they're taking these like actions, my anxiety is growing because I know what's down there already and these people don't and I am... I get anxious thinking about it, but it was so good. Then we have Vicious by B.E. Schwab, which is a release from a kajillion years ago. I got the new editions. I had never read it, and I did, and I really freaking liked it. I really like her Monsters of Verity duology. I enjoy the Shades of Magic series. I really liked City of Ghosts that I read this year, and this one, though, blew my mind. I knew I liked her writing, but these particular morally gray characters, and when you meet Eli, and you meet Victor, and you see them in college, you see their friendship, you see them trying to navigate college and this thesis and they're looking into near-death experiences causing people to wake up with these like superpowers and you're looking at the psychosis that these two have and how like I forget who it is it was Eli isn't it that like he doesn't process emotions normally like he does not connect like there's just like a sociopathic disconnect where he just mimics other people's facial cues and facial emotions but he doesn't actually feel them and he just tries to come off as normal when he's like very 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 clearly not it is so intriguing to me from a psychological standpoint because you guys know I'm a freak for anything psychological but this one was such a study in morality and in right and wrong and like shades of wrongness and shades of morality and it was so good so so good. I did also read Vengeful this year and I didn't love it as much as Vicious. Still good but like this was a five star read, that one was a four star read. This was so damn good. Then we're gonna get into a book that I put off certain I was gonna hate it and I didn't. I five starred the hell out of this book. Don't talk to me about the sequel because I read the sequel this year too. Didn't love the sequel but holy shit Never Night by Jay Kristoff blew me away. This is an adult novel with murder and sex and gore and craziness. And this one follows Mia, who is at a school for assassins. It follows her whole journey trying to get there. And then while she's there, go through the school and pass all the exams to be an official member. And it's dark and it's gritty and it's told so well. Um, I really, really liked all the characters. I love Mia and Mr. Kindly and Trick and... Ash can get screwed, but like the rest of it is so intriguing and so cool. I had a lot of thoughts as I read this thing, like a lot of them, and it was just so, so cool. So I did a buddy read of this. I did a reading vlog of this. If you want to know my thoughts as I go through the reading vlog, I will link that in a card up above because it was so phenomenal. Like I really, really enjoyed reading this for the first time this year. Again, I've already said it, God's Grave was not my favorite, but this was really amazing, and I will give Dark Dawn a chance still. Then I read Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, which was my first Alice Oseman ever, and this thing blew me away. It is an Eliza and her monsters, but done better. It's about a girl who writes or draws fan art for a uh, podcast that she listens to, and then she figures out who the podcast uh, performer is, and they strike up this friendship, and it's just... I am a sucker for found families and for really amazingly well done friendships and for diversity and complexity in characters and looking at youth and just treating them respectfully and being realistic in their behaviors and it was just so well done and it was kind of just like this love letter to nerds like people that do fan art and that do these podcasts and create this social media presence for themselves and like a personality that's outside of themselves where they can communicate and express themselves in ways that they can't maybe in their real world and looks at family and uh, just it was so well done I really 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 loved it. Can't believe that I waited this long to read an Alice Oseman. I do have more now on my shelf from her that I hope to read soon, but this one really, really surprised me. Then we have another one that I just absolutely loved. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now this is one that I dragged my feet on, guys. The hype is so real on booktube for this book, and for good reason. It is phenomenal. But it's like a historical-ish book. It is the memoir of an old Hollywood starlet, and I don't care about that. So I was like, I'm not going to like it. That's totally not my kind of book. Turns out, totally is. 
So this is about Monique who is a journalist and she gets the story of a lifetime to go and hear about the life right from Evelyn Hugo who is this famed starlet and she's had seven husbands. So the first question that she opens with is who is the true love of your life and it's none of the seven husbands. And this is a very a sex positive book about a very very morally gray character who did whatever it took to survive and thrive in an industry that is not kind to women or aging women in a time where her sexuality was not accepted or welcome and what she did to preserve her career and preserve her love life and how that all balances out and equals out how this whole story weaves together was so well done and like so many other people at the end of it I wanted to go and google Evelyn Hugo and watch her movies and know more about her and she doesn't exist. Taylor Jenkins Reid crafted such a gorgeous novel and such amazing characters who are at times so deeply unlikable but also so compelling and so real. And if you've been thinking that this is not your genre, not your thing, give it a try. Also on this list, but one that I don't have because I listen to the audiobook because I listen to the audiobook for all of these books, Before the Devil Breaks You by Leba Bray, which is the third of the Diviner series, and it is so good. I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't want to give anything away, but this follows like paranormal, supernatural 20s-ish New York, which like is not my thing. I dragged my feet on the Diviners because I was like, it's historical. I'm not going to like it. Roaring 20s be damned. I don't want to read it. I was wrong. It's amazing. And I'm just waiting for them to figure out what the hell they want to do with the covers. And once they've just settled on a cover, I will buy the series. Until then, I'm going to enjoy the audiobooks because they are phenomenally performed by January Jones. And it is just such a stunning story, which is shocking because not all the characters are likable. Like, in fact, like Evie as a main character is often very annoying. But some of the relationships in this story and the way that these characters weave around one another and interact with one another is so great. And I just love everything about it. It's such a great series. And then I'm going to talk about... <sighs> what order do I put this in? This is stupid. All of these books are amazing. These two books, I shouldn't have to argue over what order they're in, but I am in my head. So I'm just going to talk about This Adventure Ends by Emma Mills. I found Emma Mills in 2018 and I read This Adventure Ends, Foolish Hearts, and First and Then by her. First and Then was like a three or four star. Foolish Hearts was a three star. This was a five star. This is by far my favorite contemporary. I fell in love love with this story. This follows Sloane who has moved to I believe Florida and she has found a new friend group and she's trying to fit her way in. Obviously it's difficult when you go to a new place you don't really know everybody. The families in this are phenomenal. Sloane's family is great. Love the way that Emma Mills writes family dynamics. Um, I love Sloane's dad. He is a fiction writer and he's going through a really bad writer's block so he starts writing fan fiction and her and her dad kind of bond over this fan fiction writing. Adorable. And I love the friend group. I love the romance. I just, it's another found family, really, really well rounded contemporary about YA. It has realistic friend fights, realistic friend relationship. They argue, they call each other on bullshit, they make up. There's arguments in the family. The families aren't perfect, but they're so beautiful and so loving. And I think that that's like my favorite kind of contemporary. I don't want everything to be like wrapped up all neatly. I don't want the romance to be the main focus. I want the families and the friendships to be the main focus. And these relationships are done really, really well. Also, she just has the best luck with cover designers. Like, her books are stunning. She quickly became an auto-buy author for me this particular year, and I know that I will always pick up whatever comes from her, no matter what. I also have already read Famous in a Small Town, which comes out in 2019, and I really enjoyed that. I four-starred that. Is it perfect? No. It's not as good as this one, in my personal opinion, but it's still gorgeous, gorgeous. Like, the cover is going to be stunning. And I will still pre-order it, and I I will still enjoy it and display it on my shelves and be proud to own it. Um, and then my last, which I'll put in the number one spot because I just don't know, I'd be crazy not to, right, really, is Lainey Taylor's Strange the Dreamer. I really pushed back reading this book and I don't know why. It is so lyrical. It is purple prose. It is flowery. It is gorgeous. The way she develops worlds, the way she develops magic systems, the way she develops characters, the way she weaves a story together is not necessarily super fast paced, but it is just so lyrical and so gorgeous. Her Daughter of Smoke and Bone series I read last year, and I 
absolutely loved it. Again, the writing style is very much akin to this one, but this one I think really, really steps it up. It is a beautiful story about a boy named Laszlo Strange who is obsessed with words and with a lost city called Weep. And one morning the world woke up and collectively had forgotten the name of this city and everything about it. And he's made it his life to just live in this library and learn as much as he can about it through receipts or any kind of like mention in any other books. And he gets the chance to go to this city with this traveling group of people and go explore. They have a problem. They need help with it. And he's going to go and go help. And it's kind of like his life dream come to fruition. And it is stunning. Muse of Nightmares, just as much so. But Strange the Dreamer, I fell in love with this year. I'm so glad I finally got to this duology. It is absolutely breathtaking. She makes me doubt my ability as a writer. She makes me question why I either even bother trying. And she reminds me why I love reading. And it's more than I could have asked for. It's such a gift. So this is my favorite, probably backlist book of the year. And there's some really hard hitting, really, really great ones in this pile, guys. So that says a lot. So let me know what your favorite backlist book that you read in 2018 was, but that has been my top 10. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, comment down below with your favorite backlist book of 2018, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you know when I post new videos. Click that little notification bell too, that helps. And I will see all of you in my next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.